Hello everybody and welcome again to our environmental justice lesson. My name is Natisha Washington and I'm the environmental justice organizer for 412 Justice. In today's lesson, we're going to talk a little bit about air pollution. Now, air pollution is not uncommon for us here in Allegheny County because we've had a long time history, especially with our city, around bad air. We had these soot covered skies that inspired songs, they inspired poems, and they inspired a lot of people to write books about us. But even though we haven't had soot covered skies in a long time, we still do have one of the worst air pollutions in the nation. Now our history with air pollution kind of started in the 1940s or a little before when our three rivers were lined with steel factories and iron factories and many fossil fuel industries that were just blowing pollutants into our sky. We had soot that was so dense that we didn't see the sun most days. People had to clean off their clothing, they had to clean off buildings, wipe off their windows because ash would just fall constantly from the sky. So it wasn't until later in the 1940s when our then mayor David Lawrence started the Renaissance 1 and Renaissance 2 projects. Now these projects did a lot of great things environmentally and helped clean a lot of soot off of the side of our buildings but you will find out later on that it wasn't so good when it came to the redevelopment which led to a lot of unfortunate displacement in 1948 we had an incident called the Donora smog event now if you're not familiar with this event in 1948 Donora PA which is only 30 miles south from here in Pittsburgh had a smog event that was so bad that it killed 19 people and it harmed 500 others who had respiratory issues not too long after the event had occurred now this event was so widespread and so bad that it got President Truman at the time to put together our first national air pollution conference but it wasn't until 13 years later that we finally got the Clean Air Act, which is still an act we use today for a lot of our air pollution needs. We had President Nixon Truman in 1970 kind of make that plan more comprehensive after he created the EPA, who is an environmental protection agency for our national needs that is also very much involved in a lot of these air pollution issues. In the 1980s, we started to see a decline in steel, with its peak being at 650,000 workers in 1953. By 1984, we had less than half of that at 236,000 workers that were working in steel at the time. Now, this not only affected people nationally, but it really affected us here in Pittsburgh because we were known as the Steel City, hence our football team being named the Steelers. Currently, the industry only employs 143,000 people, and it is still declining today. Even though we love the industry that we have built, we know that it is not very healthy for our skies, our workers, our community, and we want to find a way to fix it. So let's ramp this up to current times, shall we? So in 2018, on Christmas Eve, Claritin got a lovely present of a fire that happened at the Claritin Coke Works Mills. Now, this fire was seen by many residents through their bedroom windows, but many people didn't really know what was going on. They didn't really know what was happening, and they weren't notified until two weeks later that there was actually a fire at the mill that put so many dangerous pollutants in the sky that it could have been very harmful to people who have asthma and respiratory issues like COPD or bronchitis. This, of course, resulted in a lawsuit where they were awarded $8.5 million. Now, only $2 million of this went to residents, but $6.5 million of it went to equipment upgrades for the Clareton Coke Mills. Now, you might not think that that's important. You might think, why didn't so much more money go to the residents? But we're going to explain later why that is. So after the fire, six months later, there was another fire that happened. And I know this personally because it happened on my birthday, which is June 17th. This fire really brought people together in a rage of what was happening at Claritin Cook Mills. They found that there were leaking batteries that were even causing more harmful pollutants to enter the sky. Now, after these two fires, people were outraged. People took to the streets. They took to the city council building to say, we don't want our air to be this toxic. We need to be warned about these things. We need this fixed now. And we've been dealing with it for too long. And a lot of them came to the public hearings that the Allegheny County Health Department had to address this issue. There were a lot of our state reps. There were a lot of our community leaders that came out and said, we need to fix this today. Because why should we deal with two fires that are putting pollutants that are sending our children to the hospital? So in April of 2021, U.S. Steel said that they would put a $1.5 billion investment into our cleared and coke work facilities, that they would upgrade these batteries and have more sustainable practices that would reduce the pollutants that come out of our sky. But a couple months later, they said that they were no longer going to do this investment. And in January, announced that they were going to do a $3 billion investment into a new facility that is in Arkansas, which a lot of people know is not a very union-friendly state and a very semi-lawless area for pollutants. Last year in 2022, the Allegheny County Health Department issued $458,000 and stipulated fines to this facility for just the first quarter of 2022. That means that they violated their air pollution limit so much that they were fined $458,000. Now, this is just one of the many fines you're going to hear about U.S. still paying for polluting our air, which people are saying now is kind of a pay to pollute situation that we have to address. Now, in May of last year, the Allegheny County Health Department joined the EPA and the Department of Justice to do a consent decree against 
Eckert Thompson Mill, which was polluting a high amount of hydrogen sulfide, also known as the rotten egg smell that you smell in the air, which is a very deadly chemical to have in your respiratory system. So they said, not only do we want you to clean this up, but you are going to be fined $1.5 million in a penalty for the amount of pollutants that you have been spreading. Now, just last year, during November, around Thanksgiving time, and in December, around Christmas and Christmas Eve, we had multiple days of bad air. Now, this is due to weather inversions when a lot of the hot air and cold air kind of are together but separated, so they trap a lot of the pollutants in this layer of air that you kind of see as smog or sometimes it's like a mist that's in the air, but most of the times you can smell it from that rotten stitch that people always talk about. So we had six days during the Thanksgiving time and five days during Christmas time where people weren't able to go outside and enjoy the fresh air now we didn't have too bad weather so people were just stuck indoors when they should have been with their families celebrating the holiday now currently in 2020 we have a lot of bigger issues on our hand as we're dealing with the marcellus shell plant who has been exceeding their limits tenfold as they just opened in november and we're also dealing with the pollutant remnants that are coming from the train derailment that happened in east palestine ohio so our pollution is going to probably get a lot worse now that we have these added factors I hope that this lesson was helpful for you. Our next lesson will be on the actual train derailment. We want to go through the timeline of what happened, how it's affecting the residents, and what people are trying to do about it. I know this is a new issue and it's a very confusing issue and a lot is going on, but we want to try to simplify that for you. So I hope you can check us out next week as we will talk about the train derailment. So again, my name is Natisha Washington. I'm the environmental justice organizer at 412 Justice, and I hope to see you next time. Goodbye, everybody.